Welcome back. Today we will work on the situation awareness measurement and a particular technique named situation awareness global assessment technique. Situation awareness global assessment technique. Okay. So first let us understand what is situation awareness and why do we actually need situation awareness when we are talking about any kind of mental work. Okay. So situation awareness is this per, is, is a kind of perception okay it's a perception of the elements in the environment uh, it's it's a kind of perception that is uh, there in the surrounding in the environment in three major area first is time and space then is the comprehension of their measuring third is projection of their state, status in near future. So, within these three major domain time and space comprehension of their measure and how do we project their status in near future in these three major domain when we are actually pers you know, perceiving things perceiving the elements of the environment you will call it as situation awareness. So, situation awareness is an inferred mental construct, okay. It is actually inference, inferred uh, mental construct somewhat elusive to the measure. Most common measure is based on subjective perception or rating of situation awareness. So, it is very much connect, it is subjective in nature, the whole method is very much subjective in nature. So, depending on the uh, training, depending on the, uh, uh, know, uh, whatever the things are available near to your workspace, awareness about that will actually help you to understand how you are working in that particular situation, how you are in a position to decide the things properly. So, if someone is working in a particular situation, particular uh, environment for many years, the kind of level of situation awareness he or she has, it is of course is different, is different than a person who is new to that particular situation. So, training, uh, no uh, periodic uh, re evaluation of the situation is really helpful for someone to make the person more aware about that particular situation. So, let us go into more detail about these techniques and more uh, detail into the theory of this situation awareness. So, it says that it has mainly three levels or three uh, state ok. So, first level, second level and third level. First level says the perception of the relevant elements of the environment. So, whatever relevant elements are there in that parking particular working environment, if you are perceiving it properly, you are perceive uh, the, the kind of perception you have if you are working and that elements that is called that will be taking it as uh, level 1. Now, once that that particular level is over the next level is the second level we call it the comprehension. So, you have data now you are trying to mine those data and you are trying to comprehend that that particular level is second level of course it is not only you know the situation you are actually trying to comprehend that particular element so you have seven eight elements in that particular situation so you are uh, doing the perception it you are perceiving it okay not only perception perception is the first level second level is from that data whatever you have perceived from that data how you are actually comprehending the situation that is the second level and third level is based on that comprehension based on that data whatever is available with you those elements of that particular environment you are trying to project what is there in the near future and that is the level 3 or third level of situation awareness. So, it is very clear first you are making yourself aware 
about the situation. So, you are perceiving the elements of uh, whatever relevant elements are there in that particular environment. Once you perceive it, once the operator knows, yes, these are the elements need to be work on when you are working in that particular work environment, then you are trying to comprehend it from those data. And once you have, uh, you know, comprehended data, what you need to do, you need to, uh, if you can do the uh, prediction of the near future, then it is level 3. So, this way the intensity actually goes on the higher direction and these are the levels of situation awareness. So, if if someone is only aware about the element but not in a position to comprehend then there will be always a chance that you know uh, there will be an error in that particular situation or maybe an accident or something right. Now, in the second level also it is possible okay I, I could comprehend but I do not know the person is not in a position to know how to predict that from that data what is going to happen in the near future. If that is not possible to predict then you will not be able to the operator will not be able to take a precautionary measure if something goes wrong ok. So, to make that data the person has to uh, has to be in a position that they he or she you know can predict that what is going to happen from in the near future using the data whatever is available with you like whatever you comprehended earlier ok. So, these are the levels. So, if any level there is a fallacy then there is always a chance to you know uh, uh, to to meet any accident or uh, to uh, there will be an uh, situation where error happens and the productivity of the whole system will go down so if we if we understand the levels of situation awareness in that particular scenario and what are the possibilities are there where there is a chance to do some kind of mistake and if we can do kind of you know intervention over there then there is always uh, we are in the going going into the better direction that the, the, the whole system will perform error free or with less error. Okay. So, that is why situation awareness of any particular critical situation is very very important to analyze beforehand. So, let us go ahead with the more detail. So, situation awareness this particular thing is like it is actually a technique. Okay. So, we call it situation awareness global assessment technique. So, we will know more about this particular technique in detail. So, it is a unbiased query technique, it is it's actually you are raising the query in the whole process. So, it is an uh, it is a unbiased query technique to assess individual situation awareness. Who are these individuals? Individual means individual element of the system by the individual operator. Okay. So, if it is a system definitely in practical always it is a complex system. So, a number of elements are also more and the number of interacting persons are also more. So, how these are happening at the individual level you are actually trying to raise the query or you are um, raising the query and based on that query you are giving the answer or uh, you are giving to sort the problem ok. So, this particular technique is based on the information processing theory. So, we will come to know why it is information processing theory because when there is an input the input will pass to the next stage through some kind of information and once that information uh, you know received by one another end what will happen it is being go it is going to be processed and once it is processed then again the feedback will come back to the next phase and then it will keep on going. So, it is the same method that is happening in the information processing this particular theory is going to be used for this particular technique. 
and it is developed quite long back probably it is in 1988 uh, by the Ensley. Now there are lot of modification also happen you know over the period of time. Initially in 1988 probably this particular um, technique was being introduced. So, this particular technique considers situation awareness as an internal model okay as an internal model and that is derived from the environment prior to decision making and the performance because if you are going to take the decision based on the situation awareness and once you do that then the whole system performance can be uh, taken care directly querying the operators regarding their current knowledge of the various element in an environment and comparing their responses and the, whatever the elements are there uh, you are going to compare their responses to the actual state of the environment. This particular technique involves temporarily stopping or freezing or uh, operators activity ok. So, it actually takes care of all these things. Administering a battery of questions that target the operator's dynamic information is required to complete this particular technique. Now let us get into more detail. So uh, this particular theory situation awareness it is being modified and in 1995 in a particular uh, research paper uh, the same author described it in this way. So, it this particular this is a model and this model is being copied from this particular paper. So, you can refer the original paper. So, we, I am trying to describe their model over here. So, what it says that when in a particular working environment you have stress and workload, it, once you have system compatibility and design and the complexity of the automation this is very important okay when you have all these thing in a particular system and you have to take decision how it will interact with each other based on the decision based on the decision you will be uh, uh, with the help of situation awareness you will take the action right so based on all these information the decision will be taken and decision will be uh, no, uh, influenced by the situation awareness and the action will be taken. Now for this action what it depends on? It depends on the abilities of the workers, stress and workload of those worker okay in that particular situation and this situation awareness will help in the action performance based on the data available data available in that particular situation now this data is all about the you know unfolding the goals and objective of the current situation in that particular situation how the goals are how you are going to take the decision and how it is going to affect it what data says and all and the operators expectation ok. So, this will actually help in the uh, or uh, affect the feedback loop. Now, when I am talking about the experience and training it says that action, decisions and situation awareness within a dynamic environment. Now this dynamic, why dynamic? Because when I am talking about situation awareness, so there are n numbers of elements present okay, in a particular situation. Now these elements keep on interacting with each other and based on the type of interaction the whole situation becomes dynamic in nature. So, all these changes to situation awareness drive may change to the decision making which drives the changes in the performance because once the decisions are different definitely the performance of the whole system and performance of the operator also going to change. So, this is the model is being described by the author uh, in his this particular paper ok. Now, let us understand if we want to perform this particular technique for our research work what are the steps to be followed. First is developing 
the uh, SAGAT means the uh, situation awareness global assessment technique queries. Okay, first you have to develop those queries. Based on the number of queries, you have to select few because you cannot answer all these queries. So, you have to select few queries. Once it is there, then you have to implement it, administering it and then analyzing the data. Okay. So, let us go into detail uh, one by one about these techniques. Okay. Now, developing, how do we develop? these queries it's very easy okay normally in earlier all the methods i suggested that we can go for the hierarchical task analysis however in this particular method uh, the author suggested that we should go for the goal directed task analysis g d a a t a t a okay g d t a goal directed task analysis. Now, this is very similar to hierarchical task analysis. I will explain it in the next slide. So, this particular pro, uh, step, it seeks to uncover the operator's goal in a particular domain. It seeks try to what it does, it actually try to uncover the operator's goal in a domain. The decision that must be made to achieve this goal and the dynamic information requirements is needed to support this particular decision. A thorough and concise query is made. Question should be designed in such a way that an operator's response will encompass knowledge of multiple situation awareness requirement. The wording of queries should be compatible with the operator's frame of reference and appropriate to the language of domain. So, this is very important whenever we are developing the questions, you have to remember that it should be compatible to the operator and their language domain. If some uh, different varieties of language are being used, you will not be able to generate those specific query from the operator. So, this particular process is very, very important when you take it to the field. Now, let us understand about this goal directed uh, task analysis. What is this? In a particular system, you have a major goal. Okay, You have a major goal. Under that goal, you may have small, small sub goals. In hierarchical task analysis, what you do? One goal and then there are small, small sub tasks. Here we mainly talk about not the task, we mainly talk about the goal of that particular task. Okay? So, goal, sub goal number 1 or sub goal number 2 for this particular example, it can have multiple sub goal. Now, when there is one sub goal, it may have to achieve that sub goal, uh, it needs two specific key decisions. So, for this particular portion of this case, we have taken two decision, maybe in this case, it is one decision, but it depends. It absolutely depends on what type of situation you are going to analyze. Okay. Now, under each sub goal, we have key decision which is influenced by the required situation awareness and this situation awareness has all three level, level 1, level 2 and level 3. For all these situation awareness, we need level 1, level 2 and level 3. So, level 1 says that you understand or you perceive the data. In the second level, you comprehend the data and in third level after comprehension, you project the data in the near future. So, for all these situation awareness, you can have this type of mapping and that is GDTA, goal directed task analysis. Now, this is the first step of this particular method that you need to achieve and this takes little time because once 
a person or the researcher is going to collect data, he or she may not be completely know the situation. So, it takes several field visit and then only with the interaction with the stakeholder, you can develop these, uh, this type of chart. Okay. Now, moving to the second uh, phase that is the selecting the queries, okay, selecting those queries. It says that SAGAT queries can be presented in their entirely at each freeze, okay, each sections, okay. Whenever there is a freeze, you select a query. So, otherwise the query set can be customized for the specific needs of the experimental design, okay. So, uh, that is always available. So, the selection of these queries to administer during the trial which depends on several factors. Now, what are these factors? I will explain it. Uh, first factor is the objective of the study. Based on the objective, the factors will change. The time available to answer these queries because what is the time span you have? The phase of the task at the time of, of a particular stop, any limitation of the test bed, uh, not all question have to be asked at each stop. It is not possible, okay. It is really not possible that you should um, answer at every stop. But however, you should be carefully, you have to take care that avoid the narrowing the question set. Because if it is too narrow, then it becomes very difficult for you to get those answer. And allow the operators to prepare for specific queries because you know uh, if you just like that you ask maybe they are puzzled they are not in a position to answer it correctly. So, you allow some preparation time. If the al time allotments is not proper probably it will not help uh, you to uh, select proper query and asking only high priority question at a particular point of simulated scenario. Otherwise, it will be very difficult to narrow it down your the questions and uh, get the exact query or selecting the ex, uh, no critical query. Otherwise, it may happen there are you no know, um, multiple things are coming and the researcher will not be in a position to go ahead in a correct direction. Now, to do so, this uh, when we are talking about the selecting the uh, these particular queries, what we have to keep in mind while developing this question paper, these factors. What are these? First question should present participants with a map of work environment with boundaries and reference point. If you do not give these boundaries and reference point at the very beginning, the participant may not be able to tell you the exact elements present in that particular environment. The second thing is asking them to fill in the location of the various element in that particular scenario. So, that should be there in the set of questions and this map should usually form the basis of the other question administered during the stop. So, these are the basic fundamentals you should follow while developing the questions for selecting the queries. Now, this is an example. This example is quoted from this particular, uh, particular paper. What it says in, in, a, in a particular situation where uh, you know you are trying to understand uh, a situation where you know anesthesia, anesthesia provider when performing a standard induction of general anesthesia with oral endotracheal tube intubation, okay. For this what is happening? So, this is the place where you can write your answer. Okay, this is just copied or just uh, no referred from this particular this particular paper. Okay, so uh, what you have to do list of the key decision necessary to successfully achieve this goal. Now that you have to generate. So this is the objective that listing the key decision. Okay, key decision. Now one example is given. So this is one 
one particular question uh, is being quoted from this particular paper. Can you think of a way, uh, any other goal necessary for achieving induction of general anesthesia with oral uh, endotracheal tube intubation? Okay, so now if he say he or she says yes or no, based on that, next further questions to be asked. Okay, so now these are the labels possible. So, level 1, level 2, level 3. Level 1 says the situation awareness refers to the basic perception of cues and important information as I mentioned in the beginning that knowing the elements, knowing the elements of that particular situation. So, when I am talking about the um, anesthesia, so anesthesia like or, or no, uh, through uh, the oral endotracheal anesthesia for, for that if you are trying to do what are the basic elements are present in that particular environment the person should be aware of it. Okay. Now, based on the previous data how you are actually comprehending the data. So, whatever information is coming on the monitor based on that how you are changing the movement, how you are changing the doses, how what is happening. So, that is the second level and based on that how you are taking decision, what is the changes in the dose, what is the changes in the position, how you are taking it that is your prediction. If you do this then what is going to happen that has to be done. So, you are going to ask all such varieties of question using this particular model and you can put it down in a particular format. From there only you are going to select those queries because all are not be selected. So, you can select some specific queries. Now, once it is there you have uh, two or three selection. Now, you have to implement it right. The timing of this particular technique stops should be randomly determined and not occur only at times of increased activity that you have to keep in mind. So, a SAGAT stop should not occur within first 3 to 5 minutes of the experimental trial because in that particular duration maybe the person or maybe the operator is not really acquainted with the environment. So, you should not take any information from there and this stop should not occur within 1 minute of each other. Okay, that you have to keep in mind and multiple SAGAT stops can be incorporated into a single scenario. Uh, as many as uh, 3 stops within 5 minutes have been used with no adverse effect. That is the normal or general procedure. Over the uh, course of an experiment, 30 to 60 sampling should be collected per situation awareness query for each experimental condition. So, these are the process or these are the methods to be remembered during the implementation. Now, moving to the administering that SAGAT, you have to you have to remember the participant should be fully briefed on this particular methodology. Okay. If the participant is not briefed about this methodology, the query identification and selection will be very, very difficult okay. and the person will not be able to contribute properly. So, examples of the queries that will be asked and the manner in which the queries will be presented. Several training trials should be provided in which these particular stops are administered. The SAGAT is implemented by temporarily freezing a simulation. Okay. How do you do? You freeze a particular simulation at predetermined random times and blanking task displays. Okay. That way you actually administer it. What else? A set of queries is then administered to the participant. When more than one participant is taking part in a particular study, 
all participants should be given the SAGAT battery at the same time without any communication between the participant. Okay. So, when there are more number of participants, you can take the information at a time. However, you have to make sure that they are not communicating with each other. Once a participant complete the SAGAT test battery, the time interval has elapsed, the, uh, the simulation is resumed from the exact point at, at which it was frozen for the SAGAT query. Okay. That way you actually need to do the experiment. Now the correct answer to the queries must be recorded. Okay, must be recorded at the same time the participant is completing this particular battery, SAGT set of battery. When possible, the data on the actual state of system should be recorded directly by the simulator. Okay, the simulator should be able to record those data. For queries whose answers cannot be collected using simulation computer, a subject matter expert who is fully versed with this particular domain and the specific test scenario should be used to supply the correct answer because it may happen these all types of techniques are very much skilled based job okay you really need subject matters uh, expert okay so if you have such situation if the simulator is not in a position to answer in that case the person who is really aware about the whole thing they should be in a position to answer it now you are going to analyze those data. Now, resp uh, responses of SAGT queries are scored as either correct or incorrect. It is you know either correct or incorrect based on the acceptable tolerance band. When evaluating these data, each query is typically analyzed separately because maybe each query is not interconnected or may be connected. We do not know. But for the purpose of analysis, every query will be analyzed separately. For example, percentage of correct responses to query 1 under condition 1 should be compared with the percent correct responses to query 1 under condition 2. Okay. Two condition, condition 1 and condition 2, same query, it should be answered separately and analyzed separately and then they can be compared with each other. So, that will help you to understand the scenarios in a better way. So, this is an example of uh, goal directed task analysis for en route uh, air traffic control. This is again you know uh, this particular example quoted from this particular paper. So, it says that what is the major goal? The major goal is the maintain the aircraft uh, conformance. Okay, so that is the major goal. Now, under that, you have two sub goal. What is assess the aircraft conformance to assign those parameter and resolve. If there is a problem in that uh, conformance, then you resolve it. First is one task. One sub goal is you assess it. Second is if there is a problem you resolve it. Under this first sub goal, what it say, what you are going to do? Aircraft at proceeding to assigned altitude, you are asking, okay. Is this aircraft proceedings to assigned altitude fast enough? If then answer yes based on that, then second portion will be the time until aircraft reaches the assigned altitude or not, amount of altitude is, is in deviation or not. Now, if you are talking about the climbing or descending, then what is the altitude, uh, current, what is assigned and rate of change. So, based on all these information, you will be able to understand that that you know uh, aircraft uh, no conformance is correct or not. Now, if it is not correct, then second sub goal will come into picture that is resolving it. 
to resolve that first you have to identify the reason why it is not now what you have to do to identify the reason you have to verify those data data on what you know presented in alti uh, is that presented altitude whatever is available is correct or not air speed is correct or not and position of uh, position or heading is uh, you know corrected or not so based on that what whatever decisions you are so you know the situation you are aware about the situation now you are going to take the decision what is said that will that current behavior may cause a problem or not now once you have answer of all those things then we will be able to take a decision how do we resolve the issue okay so this is just an example for more detail about this particular example you can read this paper okay and if you have still if you have a query you can get back to us in the discussion session now this table says or elaborates uh, again uh, it has been quoted from a particular book and it talks about all these projections okay it talks about all this projection again i suggest that you should take a look of this particular book and you can read it this is this is all about describing the example okay so if you have any difficulties you can come back to us now again when i we have such data this is the table again this is quoted from this particular standards handbook it it is just an example so you have a condition and you have query 1 query 2 con query 3 and you have a five stop okay you have five stop now this is the data and what it says the number of correct and incorrect answer is initially counted for each participant across stop on a query by query basis so for query 1 what is happening for query 2 what is happening for query 3 what is happening 10 aircrafts were present in the simulation scenario at the point in time at which the first uh, SAGAT stop or we call it stop 1 occurred ok that we came to know. If participant 1 correctly recalled the position of only one uh, only 8 work aircraft the score of the participant or stop or the query should be 8 out of 10. So, here it is there right now if it for stop 2 it is 2 out of 4 something like that they have identified in this particular uh, example. Once score have been determined for each query and each stop the percentage of correct response to specific query is calculated for the all stop ok. Many queries are simple either correct and incorrect and thus, thus would have binary score either 0 or 1. So, for these cases like maybe in query 1, uh, 2 and 3 it is either 1 or 0, either 1 or 0 something like that ok. So, that has been calculated for this particular example. In the next case here we calculated it for stop by stop, stop 1, stop 2, stop 3. Here we will go for the participant wise ok, participant 1, 2 and 3. So, what it says the scores are average scores of all participants for a single query for a particular query what is the average score and these scores are then ready for you know comparison with uh, other experimental condition using an appropriate statistical technique because you have the answer for query 1, you have the answer for query 2 and this is for one single experiment when you have another experiment then these data can be compared ok then you can understand which situation is more beneficial which situation is more error free ok there are which situation causes uh, less uh, no prediction of accidents so these things you can 
develop or you can um, analyze from uh, using this particular technique ok. Let us go ahead with the advantages of this particular technique. So, objective measure you know you have lot of objective measure no subjective judgment required direct measure no inferences based on the performance and behavior and it maximizes the data collection in less amount of time. It provides diagnostic information on specific elements of situation awareness as well as composite representation of all levels of operator situation awareness. Collect situation awareness information throughout activities because it is not only for a for a particular moment ok. It is throughout the activities and it avoids the pitfalls associated with the collecting data after the fact because it collect the data during the activities not after that ok. So, it is very essential that you know the whole scenario very correctly before you take any kind of decision. So, this is these are the you know, major advantages however, disadvantages are there. It requires uh, extensive uh, you know, preparation because uh, you know situation awareness requiring through no goal directed task analysis is time time consuming that is why you need lot of time before actually you do the analysis before you have before you do the analysis you should have the GDTA right and GDTA takes lot of time. It requires access to simulation facility because if you if you are not in a position to simulate those situations ok, situation 1, situation 2, situation 3 like that if you cannot simulate that then it will you will not be able to do any kind any such analysis. So, simulators are important requires ability to stop and restart the simulation because uh, if the simulate simulator uh, never allows you to you know uh, stop and restart then you will not be able to do uh, you know stop by stop analysis and may be intrusive uh, to performance depending upon the task, uh, task circumstances and the individual and not well suited to actual operation. It may happen because it may the, the, because you you actually do the things in you no know, in in a simulator. So uh, uh, it may not be very much connected to the actual operation. So, these are the disadvantages however, as we have lot of advantages uh, for of this particular tool in some cases where it is very much relevant we are going to use this tool to get the awareness data of the of that particular situation. Now, let us understand what is the kind of uh, time it takes uh, to train a person who can collect data. So, training time for the actual administering uh, SAGT is very minimal. However, the person should be aware about the basic techniques like GDTA or you know uh, situation they should know the subject very well and participants simply need to be present with the example uh, queries at appropriate time in the training trial. What do you need? Administering this particular technique can be through pen and paper, can be developed through a program on a personal computer and collecting these data can be through a personal program. However, simulator is must based on the what is your objective or objective of the study ok. What kind of simulation uh, situation you are going to analyze based on that those simulators are absolutely important ok. So, this is all about uh, situation awareness global assessment technique and I suggest again as I do for every technique you practice it you get your own data if you have any difficulties in you know analyzing those data or collecting the data or interpreting the data come back to us in the discussion session. Thank you. Mm -hmm.